This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famers, Mike Van Dees joining us here at Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Hey, happy Wednesday, the Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center here inside the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Big show coming up today on a Wednesday. Had a great day golfing today, too. Got out, did 18 this morning, got to get out tomorrow and Friday. We're running out of golf days, so we got to get out as many times as possible. If you'd like to go with me, let me know. That'd be awesome. Uh, Big show, like I said, Kyle Mahelish is going to join us. We're going to talk some uh, capital football. Bruins picked up the first win of the season last week. A 41-0 blitzing of a not good flathead team. So we'll talk to Coach Mahelish. They've got Butte, capital does this week at home. That's coming up. Also going to check in with Mindy Robinson. You can follow her at iHeartMindy on the Twitter. She is a uh, political commentator. Uh, go to red, white, and fu uh, dot com for her uh, website. Uh, she ran for governor uh, in Nevada, and I want she lives in Las Vegas. I want to chat with her about with the PBR and national finals rodeos moving to um, Texas for the year for 2020 in November and December. I want to talk to her about how much Vegas is going to lose financially. Everything, because it's not great. And she's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna give us her uh, opinion of last night's debate. Um, I'm not sure if you watched it or not. You didn't really miss anything, except just it, it was a couple of kids talking and screaming over top of each other, basically. So anyway, uh, that's on the way. on this day in history and uh, a whole lot more coming up as well. We start with our daily COVID update. And a record 348 new cases reported today. 180 total deaths, 170 currently in the hospital. There are 3,635 active cases in the state of Montana. 9,256 have uh, recovered. And the total of 13,071 cases since March. 906 in Yellowstone County. 519 in the Flathead. 224 Glacier. 290 Cascade, 341 Missoula County, 113 Lewis and Clark, 147 Gallatin, 308 Roosevelt. Then you've got 86 in uh, Rosebud and 135 in Bighorn. Active cases, 20 in Park County. And uh, let's see, 32 Jefferson, 45 in Silver Bow. 44 up in uh, Hill County, 40 now in Toole County, and 33 active cases in uh, Pondere, along with uh, 35 in Valley. So it's spread across the straight, uh, state. Petroleum County is still the only county in Montana to not have a case of COVID. How about that? 55 out of 56 have, uh, have had cases. And, you know, we've seen... Now we're seeing uh, schools, Jordan, Conrad, shut down for a couple of weeks because of uh, cases in the schools. Uh, Dr. Uh, Elizabeth Burks, or Deborah Burks, rather, the coronavirus response coordinator for the White House Coronavirus Task Force, uh, did an exclusive interview with NBC Montana and told uh, Maritza Giorgio... um, you know, it's, it's, 
she's concerned about Montana heading into the winter months because you can't gather with families. She's really concerned, Dr. Burks is, about COVID and the tribal nations. Now we've seen the Blackhead Nation or the Blackfeet Nation say, uh, we're closed for quarantine for two weeks. Um, also, Dr. Burks is uh, concerned about Yellowstone County and uh, says that Yellowstone was the first county in the state to uh, have evidence of the community spread, and it hasn't stopped. And she told NBC Montana, quote, that tells me you're not stopping the spread where the community spread is happening, end quote. I wonder, I wonder why. Uh, she's also, uh, she doesn't care if you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, just wear masks indoors and outdoors, and uh, says it's not a hoax. It is a real virus. And uh, it's, um, those are the numbers. But interesting, you can go to NBCMontana.com for more with uh, Dr. Burks, Dr. Deborah Burks. So, uh, let's see, where are we at? Oh, my aunt in Clyde Park is watching. Hello, Aunt Bev. Um, we're going to talk to uh, Kyle Mahelish coming up, Capital Football Coach. Also, Mindy Robinson. Well, the check-in, she uh, ran for governor in uh, the state of Nevada, and I want to get her thoughts coming up about how much Vegas is going to be hurt financially and uh, and more with the PBR finals and the national finals rodeo heading to Texas for the, uh, for the year 2020 in uh, November and December. So we'll talk to her coming up. Uh, new polls were released, football, high school. Jordy Hansen and I talked about ours yesterday. Here's the Treasure State media poll, of which I am a uh, proud voter. Class AA, Sentinel number one, 25 first place votes out of 26. Uh, senior number two, West number three. They play Thursday night in the Magic City. Helena High fourth, they received a first place vote. It was not for me. I voted for Sentinel number one. I did have Helena, I think two or three, I can't remember. But Glacier in five, also receiving votes, Bozeman and Capital. Bozeman, I understand. Capital, sorry, you, you beat a bad flathead team. I'm not going to, I can't see you voting yet for the Bruins. They're one and two. Bozeman's two and one. And then everybody else above them in the top five is three and oh. In Class A, Hamilton's number one with 11 first-place votes. Miles City, number two, with 13 first-place votes. And then you've got Billings Central with a first-place vote in third. Dillon, four. And then Columbia Falls and Laurel tie for five. Receiving votes in Class A, Libby Haver, Frenchtown, Glendive, Harden, and Whitefish. In Class B, Manhattan's number one, Treasure State Media rankings, number one, Manhattan Tigers, 13 first-place votes. Fairfield, number two, that's my number one, the Eagles. They have six first-place votes. And Glasgow in third with a lone first-place vote. Florence is number four. And then Townsend, number five, the four-and-one Bulldogs. Also receiving votes, Malta, Big Fork, Columbus, Cutbank, Eureka, Jefferson, Red Lodge, and Coal Strip got one vote. Class C, eight man, Fort Benton, number one, Flint Creek, number two, nine first place votes for Fort Benton, six for Drummond Phillipsburg, Thompson Falls sits in third, Westby Grenora, who's my number one in eight man, is number four, Treasure State Media Poll, and Joliet, number five. Uh, Fairview dropped out after losing for the first time into the receiving votes category. Scobie, Belt, Shelby, and Cascade also receiving votes in eight man. In six-man, you have Big Sandy, number one, with all 11 first-place votes. Shields Valley, number two. Hot Springs, three. Freud Lake, four. Richie Lambert, five. Receiving votes, Power Dutton Brady, Highwood, Tri-Cities, Jordan, Roy Winifred, North Star, Custer, Harlow, and Savage. And uh, there you go. Some of us vote for all five uh, classes, some don't, so that's why the disparity a little bit in some of the uh, numbers for first place votes. But there you go. There is the, uh, the top five 
for each classification of high school sports uh, in the state of Montana. Now, I did see the coaches poll for um, volleyball. Where did I see that? It's got capital number one. Great Falls High is number two. And Helena number three. Is this it? Yep. So capital one, CMR, CMR two, I'm sorry. Uh, Capital receiving 13 of 14 first place votes. CMR receiving one. I, look, Capital is the two-time defending state champs. They've won 60 in a row. I don't know who the heck at 406mtsports.com put. Actually, it's a coach's poll, so I don't know who. In, well, I guess um, Capital would have had to vote for CMR because you can't vote for yourself. So, But that's still only 14. There's 16 teams. Oh, huh, two coaches didn't vote. You've got Helena in third, uh, third, also known as three. Wow, West and Glacier. Um, in uh, the coaches' poll for Class AA volleyball. Hmm. Okay. All right, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, we're gonna recap the debates last night with Mindy Robinson. You can give her a follow at iHeartMindy on the Twitter. And uh, you can also go to her website, redwhiteandfu.com. She is a patriot, self-described, a political commentator, but she also ran for governor in Nevada in the primaries uh, this spring. And I want to talk to her about Vegas and how much Vegas is going to hurt by losing the PBR and the Wrangler National Finals for 2020 because the governor down in Nevada still not allowing big groups. So we will talk to her when we return here, Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the major mortgage team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122. Equal housing lender. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Can well, you hear look me? no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Yep. Yep. Mark has been oh. shooting beautiful photos <laughs> all across all, the though. Treasure State, from rodeos to portraits, and would oh, love yeah. to work with you. Hmm. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see oh. many masterpieces of his work, then okay. give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot. Or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces, stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rucker's Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rucker's, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. Public financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $289. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rucker's Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena.
Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Uh, welcome back on a wacky Wednesday. Jason Walker Show presented by Capital Collision Center. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. We are back. We are. the Mortgage Man Cave. Oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. I heart Mindy on the Twitter. Hold on, let me turn this music down and uh, we'll get her on the air here. Um, appreciate you joining us. Uh, Mindy Robinson, a political commentator. And. Um, I guess, oh, what, an activist, I guess we call you? Uh, yeah, I'd say conservative activist. Uh, I like it. Probably the opposite of all the destruction like the leftist it. ones do. <laughs> um, I reached out to you because you are in Vegas. I reached out to you because you are in Vegas. Um, or well, in Nevada. Right now I'm in Arizona. I'm on my off-duty time. Oh, okay. I was in an accident. Okay. I've been recruiting. Okay. It's actually my first video since it happened, so. Oh, okay. Forgive the pajamas. <laughs> oh, no worries. Um, I actually put a nice little jacket on for you. I actually put a nice little jacket on for you. Um, so anyway, um, Mindy Robinson so anyway, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. And, um, and um, I have you on, and we'll talk about the debates here in a second, second but as you know, but being uh, a, Nevada a Nevada Las Vegan, what, what, do Las Vegas, what, do, what do you guys call yourselves? What do you guys call yourselves? I don't know. I mean, I say Nevadans. I never really Nevadans? think about it. Uh, Las Vegas is a big part of it, but there's so many, you know, communities and everything around it, and... You know, most of us don't go to the strip. We don't gamble. We right. just love Nevada. Right. Or, you know, it's kind of low key most of the time. And you ran for uh, you ran the for governor. The, the governor uh, lost in the primary. Uh, lost in the primary. Um, uh, Congress. Um, I mean, I wasn't that. Uh, oh, you're right. You're not governor yet. Congress. Congress. I'm sorry. <laughs> You'd like to run yeah, for I governor. I ran for Congress. Like I did a pretty good job. Uh, the message was good. The people want to change. The GOP. Mm. You know, we've got some issues, uh, and I actually think the state GOP and some of the people on the federal level are the ones keeping it blue. Mm. I, I have to say that. I mean, dozens of seats, no conservative even ran. No one put anything up, and I got problems with that. You know, they're back at the end of the back of a criminal guy with, like, all these things under his belt. And, uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of change that's going to happen, but I don't think it's going to come from the establishment. I think it's going to come from the people ourselves. As we get more non-politicians in office and, and, and just purge it and clean it up and do what we need to do to save this country. Because something's got to happen. And I don't feel like my party's really helping. They haven't stood up. You know, we, they legalized ballot harvesting. They've ripped us off left and right. Took every constitutional right you can imagine. And I don't hear anyone trying to help us. So we're just going to do without them. I think that's going to have to be the way. Uh, don't disagree. Uh, Maybe Robinson or Jason Walker. Jason um, Walker so, Las um, so Las Vegas has been home for the Wrangler National Finals Rodeo every December, Rodeo December for a long, December long time since 1985. Time since the PBR has the been PBR there for a long time as well. But Governor but Steve Governor Sisolak Steve won't allow Sisolak big won't groups, allow big and groups, so both have to and move out of Vegas. That's a bum deal for this year. I, I looked forward to Cowboy Christmas every year. It was a big deal here. Uh, it, all the, I'm a redneck. All the rednecks come to town. Our redneck friends come to town. Our co you know, we have country music uh, artist friends that will come into town and do the shows. It's a huge celebration. It's the most Americana thing to go. And, and to, like, not have it over, what, COVID? If ever there was a group of people that don't care about germs, it's probably the people watching people do the most dangerous sport in the world, you know, riding bulls, broncos, barrel racing, all that stuff. We don't care about germs. You know, we, it, it's just destroying our economy. And I don't see how we can recoup or get better until we open up. And it just doesn't feel like we're going to open up. Because there's not going to be anything left. Everyone's going to permanently move away and not come back for these conventions. And we really can't afford that. We just can't. No, and it's tough no, because, it like tough I said, they're going to come back next year, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. But there's no but sense of when no Vegas sense is even going to open, Mindy. There's been no plan since this started. Uh, you know, we kept finding cute little ways to get around the crappy mandates, and he just kept shutting us down. I, I, I would never have thought, if you had told five-year-old me I'd be fighting for my basic constitutional rights against, you know, a governor. You can't not let people go to church. You can't shut down someone's way to make a living and then deny them unemployment because the system's broke and you don't want to deal with it. There are people that have never gotten their unemployment this entire time. I don't even know what to do. And, you know, they can talk about moratorium on rent, but then you're just screwing the landlords unless you actually stop the mortgage payments and all that kind of stuff like that. Sislak has never had a plan. 
He's only he's made a pact with California, Washington State, Oregon, those douchebags. And you know, he listens to them. He doesn't listen to the people. And he doesn't care. He barely barely became governor and there was a lot of fraud and a lot of things suspicious things going on with that he barely won he's never going to win again you know i i heard he was promised something in biden's cabinet all kinds of things whatever he's doing he doesn't care about us uh, you can tell by his twitter the democrats and republicans hate this guy we're in the middle of a recall we're doing everything we can to just save our state and get rid of him because i don't see how we can survive much longer with this no plan that he's got you know, he, he's done so many suspicious things. Like, he closed all the bars down. Like, it's amazing where you can get COVID and where you can't. Right. Apparently, all the big businesses right. and the chain stores and the weed stores that he's being looked at for campaign fraud, you know, they get to stay open. But mom and pop vitamin stores, they get to close. None of this makes sense, and I think the people see that. You know, if, if I don't want to wear a mask, I shouldn't have to wear a mask. If they work, then yours is fine. What's going on here? And why isn't anyone saying anything? I, I feel like I've been screaming from the rooftops about how, you know, fraudulent the mail-in ballots and everything's here. And... I don't, it, since it's happening everywhere, I'm having a hard time getting national attention to care. And, and you're not going to see care from the local news stations. Even the Fox channel is left is here. It's really fun. <laughs> I, it sounds like it. Uh, she is the host of Red, White, and FU. You can check, check it out. Uh, RedWhiteNFU.com. Uh, Mindy Robinson. At I Heart Mindy on the Twitter. Uh, joining us here, Mike Miller, Steve from Hotline. Mike Miller, Steve from all right. Financially, Financially, give me a number me what a Vegas number is going to lose Vegas with no PBR and no NFR, no NFR for basically for two basically weeks, three two weeks. weeks, three weeks. Like I said, it wasn't, I mean, we are known for our conventions. It's every week there is a convention. You know, whether you're talking about SHOT Show, which is like, I think one of the last that happened. You get SHOT Show, you get everything in the world. Cowboy Christmas is important because... It's money. I mean, when are people looking to spend their money the most of the year? It's going to be around Christmas time. That's when you get those fun gifts or you buy the wife a, you know, a great concert. It would have been a great opportunity to come back after what just happened. And we're being denied that. And I, I don't know what else to do. You know, what do you do when your elected officials don't care what the people want? You know, he, or we're trying to recall him, like I mentioned, he shut down a recall event against him last week. He had city officials come down, shut down an outdoor event, and they wouldn't even tell them what laws or mandates they broke. They just said, oh, you're breaking them and, and threaten the landlords and stuff like that. He's begging for money to fight the recall. Like, it's, it's getting ugly here. But, and, and I truly believe in Nevada is one of those states where there's a lot of independents, there's a lot of moderates, there's a lot of good people mixed in with the rest of us. This is really a red state. And uh, if we can get this done, that means every other state that's suffering under a tyrannical governor, they can do this. It can be done. It's not easy. One of the first things Sisolak did in office was make it harder to recall him. Mm. He never even recalled a governor before. How did he for foresee this? I swear <laughs> these things have been planned for a very long time. The Democrats are taking our rights, and they're not going to give them back very easily. No. And, and yes, PBR is part of that. We no. really should have been open and just done stuff. It would have been full. No one would have cared. None of the things we have done have created a spike or a hot spot. So if you can have Black Lives Matter protests, then I can have my cowboy Christmas. I'm just saying. Mindy Robinson, our guest here, Jason Walker Show. I've got to ask you, too, because, you know, I talked to buddies of mine that are in the rodeo industry or in the PBR, and they say that, you know, the riders, the guys in the actual PRCA and PBR will be fine. But it's the people in Vegas, the 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 concierge, the, the valets, the dealers, the bartenders, the waiters, th those are the people that are hurting that are much hurting more, and that, much is more terrible. and that is terrible. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a few things that Nevada is really good at. We're good at their conventions, and we're good at tourism. Two things that we don't have right now. The only thing that's continuing has been construction, but... That's not really helping the little guy out, you know what I mean? It's, it's not helping me, it's helping the richer people. So, uh, I don't know what to do. I, I don't see a reason why PBR would be canceled or moved. That would have been a perfect start uh, to kick us off and to get in the swing of things with a group of people that wouldn't care anyway, you know, about germs and whatnot. And, uh, well, we just don't have it. And we didn't get a say in it. I'm sorry, like, I, I feel bad. We never got to vote on it. We never got a say. We haven't since the start in April, so. So, Mindy, what's going to happen in January? It seems like never by these rules. This, it's never going to be. When are people going to stop getting sick? Never. Well, never no, I, I, yeah. So, well, I, I, yeah. Um, January is a big uh, AVN January convention. Is, big that gonna big is that going to happen? The what? The AVN convention. The AVN convention. Who cares? That's like the grossest one that we ever have. But uh, <laughs> Shasha's right before that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
I don't. It's not a real job. What are you getting an award for? Like, I know, I know, but it's so big. It's Vegas. Vegas. You know, Shot Show precedes that, and Shot Show is huge for us. And I don't know. I'm. Just, are we gonna be better by then? Probably not. If we're not ready for December, what are we gonna be ready for in January? I. I think they're just going to keep destroying us. I think Trump's going to win, and it's not going to stop. And hell, even if Trump lost because they cheated, I don't think this is going to stop. They got our rights. They got our control. You know, they got our way, our, our livelihoods, you know, under their thumbs. Why would they give that up? Maybe, we're, we're at, this is the socialism maybe, they wanted. Right, you know, they just Robinson used the virus us. to get right, it. Instead maybe of Robinson a war or voting for people in, they just declared it an emergency and gave themselves powers. That's literally what happened. How do we undo that? I know you made Magic an powers. attempt. I know you made an running attempt. Running for Congress. What did you in learn? Running for Congress. What did you learn? Running for that. Running for that. <laughs> I learned a lot. I, uh, you know, I was at CPAC and I saw what was running in my district. And you know, my bad. I spent all this time caring about national issues and all these other things, and I didn't look at my own district. I didn't really think about it until till then. And then it was actually that Monday would have been the day to sign up and the last day you could to run for Congress. And I was up against a guy that was basically a liberal. I mean, he was nice to me, but, you know, he was anti-gun, he wasn't really for Trump, uh, he wanted to raise taxes, and he was a millionaire, he was funny, and now he's up against a criminal. An outright criminal. Uh, you know, even in his commercials, he's like, never been convicted. I'm like, bro, you, you pled guilty. That's kind of, you know, you have five cases of fraud, they're all civil, they're not criminal. The count Oh, you know, he's got, he's got, what it would be, five cases of fraud, forgery, non-payment, three separate instances on people, he had a little role for a minute, and then separate instances of domestic abuse with two different, and I'm not voting, I'm just not, you know, he was popped up, and the one thing that, between the Repu Republican Party, you know, I, I, we're getting suppressed into oblivion online. We're, if I can look at my Facebook, it's a miracle. And that's happening to all of us. Everything, everyone is getting hit for fake news. No one even, it's not even true. It's not even accurate. Nothing. Literally. And I don't see the old white guys of the GOP doing anything. They don't care about Facebook. They don't have no local news stations that lean my way, not even the Fox. I barely trust, you know, regular Fox anymore. What do we have? Who's going to call out the fake news when they're posting these fake stories and manipulated footage? It was us on social media, and they're taking that from us. And I don't know why the GOP doesn't care, but the GOP backed the criminal. And that's who I'm supposed to be voting for, and I'm not voting for him, uh, in my district. We got stuck, and it happened in a lot of different places. We got someone we didn't want. We got a rhino shoved down our throats. And voting, you know, voting down the line red for these rhinos is what's destroyed Nevada. Look at all the Harry Reid. Not just someone had stopped Harry Reid Republicans, you know, before all this, and, and we'd probably still be a red state, but we're not. So I learned I'm not a fan of the GOP. I'm actually working with people on, on doing an independent constitutionalist third party called the Patriot Party in Nevada. I, I believe they're doing something similar in Arizona. We, the people, are sick. We don't see anyone in our corner. We don't see anyone helping us. So we're just basically a group of civilians and non-politicians getting together to restore the Constitution. It's absolutely ridiculous why we even have to have this discussion about restoring the Constitution, but we do. Um, who won the debate uh, last who night? Who won the debate last night? What a shit show. I'm sorry. No, like, it's fine. No, it's fine. It was a shit show. Just, like, watching it. Like, part of me almost wished Trump didn't interrupt Biden because the longer Biden talks, the weirder it gets. Like, there's a few there where you're like, you couldn't even remember what he was talking about. It was just like a bunch of, like, you know, buzzwords. Like, like a, I called what I call it, like, a, a radical leftist speak and say. Like, he's just hitting things, racism, you know, all these points. And it was weird. Like, like even in Chris Wall, I didn't mean to start. He should have never done it. He did not have the cojones to get in between those two and actually moderate it for a, a debate that people could listen to and learn from. You know, when, when you say Biden, you didn't answer this question, you need to answer it now, and he still doesn't answer it, I would have been like, ah, answer the question. You have to hold people accountable. And, and Chris Wallace was a, a half-cooked French fry, like a, just a limp French fry. I, I, I didn't see anything of it. And because of that, it was kind of hard to listen to, honestly. I mean, how many times does Trump have to disavow white supremacists? How many times? You know, how many times do we have to say the Proud Boys are racist? Or they're the worst racist group ever because I've seen, you know, there's people of every color and creed. So it was just bizarre. And, and to see Biden outright say things that were lying, never get called out. 
I knew we were in trouble the minute because I had to watch it live, live stream out here. I don't have TV. When they're like, CNN will fact check this live. Get out of here. Like, I know what you're doing. You're going to find that word, you know, find that little thing. And, and fact checking is kind of the left's new way of saying, oh, see, we're right by using fallacies and, and manipulating words. And, and I call them out on that all the time. But it was a shit show. I, I didn't like it. No, it was, it was sure tough to watch. I'm not sure I could say anyone would. No, it was, it I, was I think tough Trump to won when he started talking about how Biden will not stand up for law enforcement. You know, that's a huge for the average American. You, you see cops getting shot at, you see our cities burned. No one's doing anything about it in those Democrat-run cities. You know, there's no law and order. And when Biden is confronted with it, you know, what did Trump say? He's like, are you even, you know, supported by one law enforcement group? He's like, uh, and, oh, I don't have time to say it. You don't have time to say it because there is none. You know, and then today he's like, well, there are people. Yeah, no one's asking about people or officials. I could find all kinds of cops or former cops or mall security cops. Who knows what he's talking about? We're talking about groups and their unions. None of them back you, Biden. And uh, that's probably the biggest takeaway I got from that. But, yeah, I didn't like the discourse. I didn't like the over-talking on either side. Uh, I think Trump should have just let Biden dig his own grave because that's what Biden's best at. Same dumb stuff. Mindy Robinson joining us here, Jason Mindy Walker. Show. Joining us here, Jason Walker. We have a mutual friend. We have a mutual John friend. John Schneider. Okay. John Schneider. Oh yeah. Um, I know you were at his birthday party. Uh, I had I him on had right him before on. his birthday party, right and then he canceled it. Party, he wasn't he gonna, but then he did. Uh, he but he did. was able to get the uh, the uh, Bose extravaganza the, going. How was that? How was that? Oh my God, it was. I mean, you have to understand, I had a hell of a spring. You know, I ran for Congress in a quarantine. And it was like, I mean, I lost my mom, I lost my cat. It was like, you know, crap show. And I, I felt like all my freedoms were being stripped. And then I went to Bo's Extravaganza, and, you know, no one was wearing a mask. No one was afraid of anything. You know, the Bellamy brothers are on stage, you know, singing. The sun is setting. They grab us. It was the most American thing. And, and it kind of arrived me like that this is what it's about this is what i love about america the people the love everyone was friendly and and it really you know it keeps me going i think that was the last public event i, I got to do and uh up until i guess amp fest when i do that one but uh it, i loved it. it it he's a great guy everyone that likes everyone's just so happy you know it's such a different thing from twitter where i feel like everyone's angry mm. and you know at each other's throats and, and everything like that it was there's a lot of good people left in this world and they're not all fallen for what the media says and and i think we're a quiet majority and i i think at the end of the day that's what's really going to affect the election and changing things and getting back on fact is that most people are good people they just don't want to argue with leftists all day i guess like i do uh you filmed a movie too uh you filmed a movie too we filmed yeah i don't for Four movies with John. Uh, this, so this was the fourth one. We did, gosh, we met, we did, you're going to miss me, small part in that, and then we did Christmas Cars, which I love. It's a family-friendly Christmas movie. We did Roe v. Wade, a pro-life movie. That's not out yet. And then we did Step on, uh, Stand on It. And it's kind of a homage to uh, Smoking the Bandit. We didn't try to remake it. We tried to honor it and have fun and kind of relive it. And I think that's the difference, and, and that's what people love about the Dukes of Hazzard and all the things from their childhood is, is reliving it as adults. It's just nostalgia in a world where, you know, it's crappy reboot movies and, you know, woke things being shoved down your throat and, you know, Hollywood celebrities telling you how to live while they're all raping each other for roles. It's good that there's still conservative, happy, friendly, com you know, content that isn't afraid to be humorous and not offend people. It's, it's awesome. And there's so many Confederate flags. I can't wait for the letter campaign. Hey, uh, Mindy, when, uh, hey, uh, Mindy when, when, uh, well, when does the movie come out when, for one? When does the movie come out for one? Uh, I don't know. Okay. I, that has to go through editing, post-production, okay. closed caption. There's so many little things people don't realize. Uh, I can tell you that the Christmas movie we did did come out last year, mm -hmm. but it got re-picked up. Mm -hmm. And so, like, Walmart will be carrying it and stuff like that. So it's kind of like a new movie when something gets re-released. So we have that. And I would be surprised if this one didn't follow it. Uh, closely. He's really good at editing. I mean, he's editing in his head when he's filming. Oh, so he's cool. ready to go, and, oh, and cool. it's going to be really fun. And hopefully we get to have a premiere, and I get to see everyone again, because it's like a family. It's really nice. He's, uh, he's a pretty decent he's, dancer, uh, too. I watched him on Dancing, Dancing with the Stars. I know both stars. him and Randy did Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. But luckily, they didn't have to compete yeah. with each other. They were different <laughs> seasons. But, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. See, uh, men can dance. I just um, need a little sh instruction. Just, you know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Hey, what can people expect on your website? The what? On your website. What can people expect when we go there? 
Well, Red Wine Nephew, unapologetically, unapologetically patriotic, is the website. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. I call out my own a lot, too, which I, I wish more conservatives did, because uh, it makes us look bad. You know, if you see someone grifting the MAGA movement or something like that, call them out. Who cares if you lose a couple of people or followers? At the end of the day, it's our integrity that separates us from those people, and that's what the site's about. It's, it's not afraid to say what I want, and, and you know, it came about because... People were getting, the left was getting offended about the American flag. Remember that whole, you know, you, kids couldn't wear a flag shirt. It was offensive. Then get the hell out of here. You know, go move to Mexico. Go move to Canada. Go somewhere else. If you are offended by the red, white, and, uh, you know, F you. And that's kind of how that was born. And that in Facebook was taken down all my content. So I learned if I do it on a separate website and share the link, I'm able to say that's when I'm able to say what I want. Everything else is just censored into oblivion at this point. So... And we'll probably go back to making segments and, and stuff like that. It's just been kind of hard with the quarantine. Well, I am uh, so happy you were able to join <laughs> us. Uh, I am uh, so happy you were able to join trying us. Trying to get a hold of you for a while. Okay. I'm glad you are now following me on the Twitter. I'm glad you are now following me on the Twitter. Please come on anytime. Um, please come on anytime. You can, yes. How about after the election? You can, how about after the election? Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm one of those people. Just message me if I can do what I can do. It's sometimes I'm I used to travel nonstop. It was an issue. Obviously, I had the accident. Gosh, it's been a month wow. since the accident, so I was wow. not doing stuff. You know, I wasn't even walking, so it, it, it was something. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty easily accessible. My DMs are open. I try to read all the messages. Sometimes I miss them, but you message me, and, and you know, I got something to talk about. We'll, we'll come on and we'll discuss it. I have a feeling you have. We have to have, do something because you're not going to find it on CNN. Have. Right, so. there you go, yeah. No. <laughs> right, there um, you go, yeah. And I'm no. mostly um, on your side on all of this, so it's, uh, and people, my listeners know that. They know it. I'm not a fan of our governor up here in Montana. I'm not a fan of our governor up here in Montana. Really? Ooh, no. <laughs> Ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, not, I'm okay. I'm not afraid to call him out. So, anyway, Mindy, appreciate it. Um, enjoy Arizona. Get back to Vegas soon, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You can follow her at iHeartMindy on Twitter, redwhite and fu.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is Mindy Robinson joining us uh, on the uh, Airlink. Man, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. How cool was she? She's, um, she's pretty cool. Um, I know we had a little bit of an echo there, but, uh, it, but it's, it's fine. Um, totally fine. Uh, so there you go. You got a little bit of everything. But you'd find out how much Vegas is going to hurt. She's from Vegas or lives in Vegas. She does the PBR. She does the National Finals Rodeo. Like she talked about, Cowboy Christmas. There's a lot of, you know, like the, the, the riders, the, you know, those guys are going to have fun in Texas. The fans are going to have fun in Texas. But it's the people in Vegas that are going to hurt the most. And you look at the numbers. I mean, we're talking millions and millions of dollars for essentially a week in November and 10 to 14 days in December of PBR, National Finals Rodeo, not there now. And like Flint Rasmussen and Will Rasmussen and I have talked about it here on the show, is, you know, like I brought up, the concierge, the valets, the bartenders, the waitresses, the, the hotel people. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable that how much money is going to be lost, and in, in, it's tough. But they'll be back next year. They will be back next year. And if you miss Sean Gleason, a PBR CEO, yesterday, you can go back and listen to JasonWalkerShow.com. Just like today, you can listen to anything you may have missed, including Mindy Robinson. She was fun. She's so much fun. Uh, we'll, we'll get her back on again soon, too. Um, we'll take a break. We're going to come back. And when we do, Kyle Mahelish will join us. The Capitol Bruins picked up their first win of the year last week over Flathead. And uh, they look to go two in, uh, two in a row. Because you can't win five straight if you don't win two straight. And they'll go for their second straight against Butte Friday night. What did they do so well last week? What do they have to do this week? Kyle Mahelish will join us next. Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. 
Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rucker's Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rucker's, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta iComfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rucker's Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get it home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po'boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the major mortgage team help you with all Some your mortgage rent. needs. Head in for major breakfast, mortgage lunch, means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918. Or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work. Then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces. Stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com. Jason Walker Show, final segment on a wacky Wednesday, or wonderful Wednesday. Still uh, talking to people about Mindy Robinson. She's fun. iHeartMindy.com, or iHeartMindy on the Twitter, red, white, and F-U, uh, dot com on the online. On this day in history coming up, tomorrow we'll talk Preakness with uh, Barry Abrams, ESPN In The Gates podcast. And... Um, Friday, Selena Adelson Journey will join us. I've known her since she was in high school, and uh, she's got uh, a couple of young kids, and she's a principal now, uh, elementary, or a vice principal out in Washington. But she wrote a book. She's from Belgrade, but she wrote a book about uh, dealing with uh, little kids and COVID, and it's, it's a pretty good book. I've read most of it, so I'm looking forward to having her on Friday. Anyway, uh, speaking of Friday, uh, the AA will play most of its football games. There's a couple of games Thursday, uh, including, I think, Senior West, and then Gallatin plays somebody um, Thursday. So anyway, um, Capital, though, will be hosting the defending state runner-up, which is the Butte Bulldogs. And to uh, chat about last week's big win, which was the first of the season. And defensively, how did they uh, prepare for a Butte team that lost a lot of talent? We'll we'll talk about it. Mike Miller, State Farm Hotlines, the head coach of the Capital Bruins, Kyle Mahelich. He joins us now here on the Jason Walker Show. 3-2-1. All right, Coach, appreciate you joining us on uh, the week after a big, big win and uh, a much-needed win for the Bruins last week in a game you thought you could win, and you did. 
Well, yeah, I thought going into uh, last week we certainly had a chance. Um, I think our kids understand the message. I think they understand uh, our goals now the remainder of the season. Uh, we played well on all three phases of the game. Um, I thought defensively, you know, we came out in that first series. We caused a fumble, play one, and it goes out of bounds, so they lose. So then it's about second and 15. Then we come out, we get a turnover, short field for our offense, and we punch it in, and then, you know, a, a lot of things went well for us Friday night. But, uh, you know, the kids created their own opportunities, and uh, we took advantage of it and got a big win. Was it a must win? Yeah, it was a must win, and that's how we approached it. You know, every every week when I'm telling them it's a playoff game. I mean, we're our season's on the line, and if we want to be in the postseason play, we gotta we got to win football games. Well, you're one and two now. Um, thank goodness for Tegan Cozy. So a uh, couple of uh, touchdowns. Um, was he expected to have such a good game? Well, you know, uh, game one, he was a little winded, a little tired. He's playing you know, both sides. We give him rest on defense. and They give him rest on offense. Um, no, Tegan's a good football player. Um, and, he, he I, you know, you just have to get used to that. You know, both way snap type thing. You got to get your wind about you. Your body's got to get used to it. Um, and you know, he struggled. I think the first couple couple games, and then you know, he's kind of settled in. Uh, he had a great game defensively. Had a great game offensively. He definitely did. A couple of uh, touchdowns, like we mentioned, a couple of sacks as well. Um, compare him to Walker. Well, they play total different positions. Uh, Walker's a little bit bigger than Keegan, but uh, you know, they're both good football players. Family. I, grew, uh, I grew up with father, Brad Cozy. Uh, he was, uh, he's a Hall of Famer over at Carroll College. Uh, so football's a big part of their lives, and uh, you know, Keegan's just kind of continuing that tradition. Capital Head Coach Kyle Mahelis joining us here on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Um, Matt Burton seems to be getting more comfortable too. And, and, you know, you, you look at him, you don't look, he doesn't look like a, a, a quarterback, but he's starting to play a lot better. And I mean, I'm not, I don't want to say a lot better, but more comfortable, I guess is the word. Sure. Well, the defensive staff, coach Cockill, those guys, they put together a good game plan every week for Matt. Um, you know, when they get him out of the pocket, whether it be some naked boots, some bootlegs, some sprint out, um, just so he's, you know, Matt isn't necessarily a pocket passer, you know, like, you know, like everybody knows he's not 6'2", he in the pocket. Uh, he's very good on the move. Um, that Those are his strengths. So we certainly we certainly have to uh, formulate a plan to allow Matt to have success. He couldn't get into the end zone, though, 86 yards and, and come up an inch yard or two, <laughs> or yard short. <laughs> Yeah, his buddies were giving him a hard time on that one that he got caught at the one. So, no, it was a great run. I mean, he made the, makes the right read, and he makes a great run. And, you know, those are those big plays that we have to have. Yeah. You know, I don't know if anybody's built for first and ten and then second and seven and third and three and get the first down. We we need to offensively get those big chunk plays uh, so, we're just, so we minimize the amount of times that we have to fall behind chains and such. Well, when you have guys like Carson DeRozier and Quinn Belcher and Tyler Kovic, I mean, these guys are so good in so many different sports. It, it definitely helps on the football field as well. Let's shift to your defense real quick. Um, you come out, and like you and I talked last week, for six of eight quarters, the defense had played really well this season. Last week, you put it together for a whole game. No, they did. I mean, I, defensively, we had three three and outs. We met all of our goals. Uh I think we held them to 36 yards uh, passing and just over 100 yards or a little bit more than 100 yards rushing. Uh, the quarterback kind of hurt us on some scrambles. I thought our kids covered well downfield. We tackled extremely well. Um, we have some pretty salty kids on defense uh, that enjoy playing football. They enjoy the preparation. They enjoy the process. Uh, Chayton Winkle had a great game. Tyler Little had a great game. Cozy, our secondary, obviously played well. Um, and we do some de defensive things that uh, kind of mess with offenses. We'll uh, have some blitz schemes for you, or we'll just play coverage. We'll move some things up front. Um, but, no, I was proud of the kids. They did a he heck of a job. Well, 41 nothing. You pitch a shutout on defense. That's, uh, I mean, that's, I know no coach is ever happy, but that had to have pleased you a little bit. <laughs> no, it did. I mean, 
and like I said, I th- we know we're good defensively. We just, we you know shot ourselves in the foot in Glacier, and you know a couple times to a uh, Sentinel. You know, I was talking with Coach Mahaney today, and we were just reflecting on that game. Uh, they get a, a PI call near the goal line that t- ends up turning into a touchdown, which I you know we as coaches don't think it was a PI, but you know if a couple different things happen in, against Sentinel, it's it's probably twenty one zero, and but it, obviously it's not. We could have, should have, would have, but. Uh, how we played Friday night is, you know, we played just as hard against those other teams and it's just missed opportunities and field position and short fields that kind of come back and get you. Uh, but we were able to create turnovers. Our offense was able to move the ball. Um, and that's going to be our formula for success. We've got four games left, which is, it just seems so weird. Um, but it, you got Butte at home Friday night and this is a, a Butte team that, lost so much talent from last year's runner-up team. Uh, but what do you expect from the Bulldogs this weekend? Because it's still Butte. They're still, you know, every coach says scrappy. Um, go ahead. No, they play, you know, the game one, they play Helen over 14-9. They're up 3-0 at half. And Helen High's offense has been exploding on everybody yeah. here. So their their defense is, is good. I mean, they're big. They're physical. Um, offensive line-wise, I mean, they're – they're 290, 280, 260. Uh, there's, I mean, there's some big kids. And uh, the quarterback, obviously, has been behind Tommy a lot, so he's, he's learned a lot of football. Um, and their receivers are good. Um, so they, they are a good football team. They've just, you know, kind of like what we had at the beginning. They, they had Helen High, which is obviously a 3-0. They had uh, Glacier, who's undefeated, and then also um, uh, Sentinel. So they've gone up against – They've gone up against top three in our conference right now. Kyle Mahalish, our guest here, Jason Walker Show. You mentioned the quarterback, and I can't think of his name right now, but sitting behind Malott for, you know, the last couple of years, you learn, but you don't get that time to play. How much has is how much growth does he have from game one to now? No, he looks real comfortable in the pocket. I mean, he's been a two year J V starter, so he's been on the J V squad for two years, sophomore, junior year. Um, no, he looks comfortable. He, he manages the offense well. They're still doing all the same stuff. Um, it's just obviously the there's only one Tommy Malad. Right. He's pretty solid. So, um, no, the kid's a good quarterback. I mean, he's got some height. He's got a zing in his arm. Uh, so he's going to be a handful. What about their defense? Their defense is good. Um, their defensive line is solid. Their linebackers are good. I know they lost some guys, but they – I think their entire starting o- offense or defense, they are probably about 90% seniors, and they got a couple juniors riddled in there. So this is a, you know, this is a an older group. It's not like they're throwing a bunch of sophomores in right. um, and trying to trying to find an answer. They're a pretty uh, mature football team. We talked last week. You were not going to have senior night last week. Is it coming up this week? No, the. I kind of put that on the parents, and they've decided that they're going to do it against Hellgate. Oh, okay. And I just said, you know, if we if we don't get to Hellgate, then I don't want I don't want any phone calls that we didn't get a parent night in. <laughs> yeah, because it's not your fault. Um, <laughs> that's right. Just, that's right. You just believe it to the parents. Let let them decide. That's right. Uh, Kyle Mahelish, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. All right. So when you're in the locker room and the kids are getting ready, what's the go-to music? that you guys as the Capital Bruins usually pick um, pregame? Well, usually before we get out, it's uh, before we leave the locker room, it's a little bit of Metallica. Mm. So so uh, up to that point, you know, it's all this new stuff and rap. And, <laughs> so I don't know. I'm not a big fan of their music. <laughs> <laughs> I love but, it. Uh, so who picks the Metallica? Capital High School. Uh, who picks Metallica? It's been a tradition at Capital High School for, gosh, I don't know, okay. for quite some time. I like it. Little uh, little Inner Sandman. Yeah, nice. you got it. Nice. Uh, that whole Black Album was great, by the way. I think it's 30 that's years cool. old this year. Um, <laughs> if right. you could choose, what's your go-to that you would prefer? You know, I'm an ACDC guy, so I know Ooh. when I played, I was ACDC. Um, you know, any of ACDC, um, my, my kids still look at me and 
when I hear ACDC songs, they're like, we wouldn't even know who ACDC was unless Dad listened to us in his car. <laughs> uh, well, I said, that's some of the greatest stuff ever. It is. Of course, you probably listen yeah. to it on 8-track, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> in my dad's old van. I like it. Uh, what was your first vehicle in high school? My first vehicle was a four-wheel drive blue uh, Toyota uh, pickup. Oh, okay. Um, did you get in any wrecks in high school? I did not. Good, good. Yeah, you are pretty a safe driver. You, yes, I like that. Um, all right, big game against Butte this week. Um, Metallica will be jamming in the locker room. And what's been the biggest difference, Coach, this year? Take out COVID, take out all that, but getting kids ready for this game each and every week. You know, I think it's just been the inconsistency in everybody's schedule. Um, you know, we're in a, we're in a routine, but it's not, I guess what everybody's used to is our regular routine. Um, you know, and talking to the kids about if you're an A day and a B day, and if we're a B day kid and you're getting to school, that means you're up and going to school. If you're an A day kid, you know, you're not sleeping in until noon and then expecting your body and your, your mental capacity to be there at a seven o'clock game when you just got up at noon. I think that's been the most difficult part of making sure these kids are on point and trying to maintain a, a, as good a schedule as they can. I think that's been the most difficult part. Well, uh, I know you're one of the guys and your staff can lead these kids through a lot of different uh, challenges. You guys do a great job over there at Capitol. Appreciate it. Good luck this week, Coach, and uh, we'll talk to you All soon. All right, thank you. Kyle Mahel is joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a big game. Um, if Capital goes to 2-2 two and two and, you know, they had the tough gauntlet just like Butte has had, uh, that'll be a good game Friday night at, uh, at Vigilante. And uh, looking forward to it. Uh, let's see. So I'm guessing – so Butte came up here twice this year because they played opening game at Helena at Vigilante. They'll be here Friday against Capital. So interesting. Because normally – if they're, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like Flathead and Glacier, you know, Helena High's at Flathead, Capital hosted Flathead. So, you know, you, one or the other. But um, it's like, you know, it's all right. Uh, so listen to, uh, is it KBOW out of Butte? They'll have the game for you on Friday night. So good stuff. Appreciate Kyle Mahalis joining us. And uh, just unbelievable, unbelievable good dude. Just a great guy. I love Coach. I love all the coaches in this town. Um, always have. All right. Today is September the 30th. It is the last day of the month of September. Can you believe that? It is National Women's Health and Fitness Day. It is Chewing Gum Day, Mud Pack Day, and Love People Day. On this date in 1659, Peter Stoyweisen uh, of New Netherlands forbids tennis playing during religious services. It was the first mention of tennis in the U.S., 1659. 1904 on this date, White Sox lefty Doc White pitched his fifth shutout in 18 days. Pitchers were men back in the day. And that changed in, what, the late 70s, early 80s? And, of course, big money in the 90s and now. 1927, Babe Ruth, 60th home run off Tom Zachary, the long-time record. Uh, 1934, Babe's final game as a Yankee, went 0 for 3. 1939, the first televised college football game, Fordham versus uh, Waynesburg in New York City. 1956, White Sox, Jim Derrington at 16 was the youngest to start a game. He lost it. 1962, in their first season, the New York Mets lose their record 120th game. Uh, what were they, 54 and 120? Bad, bad baseball. Uh, 1972, Roberto Clemente was the 11th to get to 3,000 hits. It was his final hit. He died uh, New Year's Eve on a uh, relief mission in 1972. 1984, Mike Witt of the California Angels, the 11th to pitch a perfect game. Dave, uh, Dave Steeb, uh, 1988, I think it was with Toronto, lost a second consecutive no-hitter bid with two outs in the ninth. 
1989, Nolan Ryan's perfect game broken up in the eighth. He did get his 300th strikeout of the year. 1992, George Brett got four hits to get to 3,000 for his career. Uh, happy birthday, 1926. Robin Roberts won 28 consecutive complete games between 1952 and 1953. Again, men were men back in the day. Pitchers were men. 1980, happy birthday, Martina Hingis. Five-time Grand Slam singles champ in tennis. Uh, she was a Swiss tennis player, but she was born in Slovakia. Dominic Mosianu is a year older today, born on this date, 1981. Dominique Mosianu, a gymnast, took silver at the World Championships in 1995, was part of that amazing Olympic gymnastics American team that won gold in 1996. Uh, also, let's see, uh, one non-sports birthday today. Um, or did I, now I'm just all over the place here. It is, uh, excuse me, Angie Dickinson's birthday. She is 89 today, born on this date, 1931. Angie Dickinson, policewoman. Um, what was that? Uh, the, uh, was it the, um, what was the one? She was in Rio Bravo with John Wayne. She was born in Calm, North Dakota, 1931 on this date. Angie Dickinson. Um policewoman on TV, but I'm thinking of uh, Dress to Kill. That's the movie she was also in. Um, and who was the actor? Now I'm going to, oh, all over the place. <laughs> uh, one death on this date. 1955, James Dean, the actor, was killed in a car crash at the age of 24. Uh, and w w this happened, last. we found out last night, Helen Reddy died last, yesterday, the Australian singer. She was 78. But Mac Davis passed away yesterday. Uh, Mac Davis wrote the song. He was a great songwriter, but he wrote the song In the Ghetto that was recorded by Elvis. Um, but Mac Davis, my favorite Mac Davis song, uh, It's Hard to Be Humble. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Yeah, that's Mac Davis, or, uh, sad, sad stuff. Mac Davis passing away yesterday. All right, let's do this. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. Great show today. Kyle Mihalis joining us and uh, had a good time chatting with him. Capital High goes for a second straight win Friday night at home against Butte. Mindy Robinson joined us. I heart Mindy on the Twitter. Red, white, and fu.com. She is a uh, political commentator. Talked about Vegas and how much losing Vegas, uh, Vegas will lose with the CNFR. Uh, let's try that one again. Wrangler National Finals Rodeo and the PBR moving to Texas this year. And uh, she also threw in her comments about the debate last night. If you missed anything, go to jasonwalkershow.com and uh, catch any of our past shows, including today. Tomorrow, we'll talk Preakness. Barry Abrams will join us. See you at 4, The Jason Walker Show, presented by Capital Collision Center. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of The Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.